Yeah, right. Okay. There we go. Full screen. Again. Yeah, no, we're back in. Um, yeah, I just want to quickly pause. Um, I wanted to quickly talk about how we ended up working on this project in the first place because <laughs> it was a bit of a surprise at first. I got an email from Gree saying, um, "Can you know? Would you be interested in working on the project?" But before that, um, me, I, me, and you both we we met Gui and his friend Johan at the same time, didn't we? In yeah, uh, Islington. Yeah, Islington at uh, the London Game Dev Lunch, I think it was, we met them at. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So if anyone watching this is in London, that's, well, again, we're kind of still in the middle, in the pandemic, so lockdown restrictions in place. But, you know, if you're you know looking for networking or just meeting people in the industry and want to make friends as me and Billy have done, that's how it started between us two, just, you know, um, became pals for meeting up and stuff like that. Check that out on meetup.com and stuff. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. I mean, we've seen each other at a couple of the events around London, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like, in that case, um, so, I mean, uh, regarding getting the gig, basically, I'd met them before and I randomly got a Twitter DM saying, we're looking for sound and music in our game. Um, would you be up for answering some questions? So I think having met them once in person, that was probably helpful. And at that point, I reached out to Henry to say, hi, do you want to do sound if I do music? And yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, we put a joint pitch together for the project about, and I think we spent a couple of days on it together, but that's pretty much how we landed it. So yeah. Yeah. That, oh, that was right. Yeah. Cause they came to, they came to us and probably one or two other people that they met at these places, which by the way, for anyone listening, this was a year after we met them. It was like the summer of 2019. Yeah. We met them, uh, hmm. forgot about them. Honestly, personally, I did anyway. Then a year later, I got an email, Billy got a DM on Twitter um, and yeah, they were expecting, they were trying to hire one individual to do all yep. the music, all the sounds. Um, they, but, and they had quite a short time frame. Yep. And I think we both looked at that and thought, we can't do that on our own. Like, I didn't think I could do the sound of music in that time. It was like two, yep. three months. And I think you thought the same. So we thought, oh, if we collaborate, if I take on the sound, if Billy takes on the music, that might work a bit better. Yeah, definitely. I think I think it's worth doing too in the and of course it got better results, at least for me, because like I'm not really a sound designer. I've done sound design on a few like kind of small scale projects, but not on any commercial projects. So I was very happy to not have to worry about that for this one. Yeah, same. And whilst I've done music and studied music production and composed music and been in bands and stuff, um, in recent years, especially before this project. Um, I just hadn't focused on it very much. I've been doing a lot of the implementation stuff, such as videos like this and on my YouTube channel. I was, and all my attention was on sound design, so much so that I just, I knew I didn't have many sample libraries for music. I didn't, I didn't have a great setup for recording any live instruments. I didn't have access to other uh, musicians like Billy did. So I knew that was going to be a struggle for me, but the sound design I'd be a lot more stronger on. And the fact mm. that they were using... So they had chosen already beforehand, by the way, to use Unity, obviously, to build the game. But they were also happy to use FMOD as well. Um, one thing I remember them telling me was that um, they'd seen some of my YouTube tutorials online. Yeah. Um, in that year gap, so after we met them, they they were as they were building the game and needed to learn a bit about FMOD, they'd seen some of my YouTube videos. Um, and then put the put two and two together, seen the little business card I left them, and seen the videos. I go, oh, that was that guy we met. Um, yeah. So they, were, you know, quite like that. That was obviously came in handy. The fact that they wanted to use FMOD and already started and could get mm. someone to work with them who knew a bit was quite a nice bit of insurance, I think. I think just to add to that too, um, it was very helpful in that they'd pretty much built the entire game by the time we were involved. Um, they were polishing it um, in the time that we were adding music. Um, so it meant that there wasn't really any speculation about what kind of musical sound they'd need. They had a complete list of all the assets they wanted and also that they were happy to use Unity and FMOD up front and interested in having some decent interactive music and sound, I think made our job a lot more easy to get it done quickly. Yeah, definitely. So there's a lot for mm. us to sort of pull away creatively, I suppose, from the yeah. what we'd seen visually. When they when you saw when you were first speaking to them, Billy, and you saw the game. Well, even after once you'd started working on them, did you feel? And th you know, this is going to vary from project to project, but did you feel mm. like you had a lot of creative control over the music, or you found a balance between that? Because obviously, at the end of the day, yeah. this is another thing I learned. It's their vision, not ours. Yeah. yeah. Did you find like you had a lot of creative freedom? Did you were you happy with it, or were you happy to just? Yeah keep reiterating until you had something that they mm. were happy with yeah i think this was i think this was 50 50 so they had lots of references for each track in the um kind of i think their idea from the start was very much kind of like we'd like this track to have a, this level to have a flavor of this genre this level to have a flavor of this genre so um for me that was something new but um 
on the other side, they were also very happy to have like kind of weird influences. Like they really liked the singing robots, which was something I put in the proposal <laughs> as a kind of let's think of something that hopefully no one else will think of. Um, so I think a bit of both. I, I mean, in the end, the music wouldn't have sounded the way it did if it wasn't for their quite eclectic references. And I definitely had a lot of fun trying to incorporate that into the project. It was a good learning experience for me. Oh, brilliant. So I think so I think I'd say overall we met in the middle, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice mm -hmm. one. Cool. Well, I just thought we'd sort of take a bit, quick pause from the game itself and mm. talk about the behind the scenes of the behind the scenes in a way and how we kind of ended up working on this project because it is one of those things, you know, finding freelance audio work for video games is not easy and there's no real right answer. And I find it just mm. helps sharing some stories about it and some personal experiences and how mm. it came to us to be. Yeah, and just how we got on working with them. And like I said, this is one project mm. and you know every developer you work with is going to be different. Cool. Anything else you want to add to that sort of side of things? No, I think that's everything. Um, yeah, that's everything I think of there. Cool. Then we'll jump back into the mm. game. We've covered a lot. I think we'll do one or two more levels, if that's all right with you, Billy. Yeah, that's fine with me. All right.